Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Great. I love it. I'm Ken White, president of our American Academy of Nursing. It is my honor and pleasure to welcome all of you to the 2022 Health Policy Conference and to Washington, D.C. I am thrilled to share, can you tell it? I am thrilled to share that we have fellows and attendees with us from 49 states, plus the District of Columbia, plus Puerto Rico, and six, yes, I hear it for Puerto Rico, and 16 countries representing, yes, representing our incredibly committed and diverse membership. I am also elated to announce that between our registrants and guests, this is the largest academy conference ever. That pandemic didn't slow us down. It marks an incredible milestone as we make a full return to in-person meetings after two very difficult years. We are excited by this opportunity to be together. While the Academy encourages masking, we respect the personal choice of each attendee. The theme of this year's conference is From Reflection to Impact, Positioning Nursing's Future. It's very uh, apropos because we are celebrating our 50th year in 2023. To acknowledge the organization's history, impact, and future, the Academy's 50th anniversary committee, with the support of the board of directors, developed a three-year arc spanning from 2022 to 2024. 2022 marks the first year of this anniversary's activities, and it is our year of reflection. While our conference is about learning together, an underlying current of energy comes from the anticipation of our upcoming celebration. Tomorrow evening, we will recognize six remarkable leaders as living legends. On Saturday, 232 outstanding individuals will become fellows of our organization. And many of you are in the audience. Please raise your hand if you're a new fellow. Stand up. Hoot and holler. Yes. You're our future. Please stand and be recognized. Thank you so much. We will also recognize four dynamic honorary fellows and celebrate the incredible accomplishments of our award winners. With these additions to our organization, we become a stronger academy. As you can imagine, hosting an event of this magnitude takes a significant amount of time, energy, and resources. We are extremely grateful to our sponsors, exhibitors, and advertisers of this year's conference for making this event possible. I would like to take a moment and thank the leadership of the Policy Conference Planning Advisory Committee, led, led by Chair Versi Johnson Mallard and Vice Chair Nancy Redeker, and the members Maria Danet Bloom, Margot Brooks Carthen, Rashida Chandler, Rhonda Collins, Kamal Aldirawi, Kimberly Harper. Ellen Kurtzman, Patrice Nicholas, Polly Pittman, and Elda Ramirez. Every session topic, dialogue, and presentation is designed with our conference theme in mind. Each speaker was carefully selected for their expertise and perspective on the topic. I'm excited for you to hear how these thought leaders will, will reflect on issues including the workforce, health equity, violence as a public health issue, innovation, influencing policy and our organization's history, as well as how we should be orienting ourselves for future impact. We also uh, welcomed 82 posters selected by the Abstract Review Committee. You'll see on this, on this slide. I want to express my gratitude to the Review Committee, led by Danette Lapis-Bloom and Elda Ramirez who had the difficult task of selecting this year's abstracts. 
I encourage you to view the incredible work of this year's presenters. We had the first presentation session this morning, and there will be two sessions tomorrow taking place in the Marquis Salons 1, 2, and 3. Before I segue into the opening session, we will hear from Margaret Moss, a member of our board, for a land acknowledgement. Dr. Moss is an enrolled member of the Mandan, Hidatsa, and the Arikara Nation, three affiliated tribes of North Dakota, and has equal lineage as a Canadian Sioux Saskatchewan. Opening up our conference with a land acknowledgement is a practice we started with last year's Health Policy Conference and is an important reflection point for all of us to acknowledge those who occupied the land where we stand today. And now I turn it over to Dr. Moss for her message. Dr. Moss. How, Mictakoyepi, Ampetu Dushante Washtaya Nape Chiuzapie. Hidaja Ka Damakoteye, Margaret Moss, Ima Kiapie. Good morning. I've just greeted you all with a warm heart and told you that I am Margaret Moss, and my tribes are Hidaza of the three affiliated tribes of North Dakota, and that's the Mandan, Hidatsa, and Arikara. And I also have equal lineage in a Dakota First Nation in Saskatchewan. I've been asked to give a land acknowledgement for the beginning of the conference. A welcome to land is appropriate when you are an indigenous person with current or ancestral links to the land. An acknowledgement is when a person, indigenous or not, is accessing that land. Today, I acknowledge that I'm a guest on this land, now known as Washington, D.C., where we are at this conference, a native traveler from another nation, from Fort Berthold in North Dakota, as a Hidatsa person, I am one of the people of the Willows on the Missouri and Knife Rivers in the plains of what is now the U.S. And I recognize the traditional territory of the Anacostans in what is now Washington, D.C. The Anacostia River reflects their history here. I can draw similarities and make some sense in this way as to place and people, and I encourage all of you to see connections for yourself when you note upon whose ancestral traditional lands you are on today with all the layers and complexities of why you're on this land, who has been on this land, and everything that's happened in between. Not only to show respect for the original people of the lands, but also in recognition of Indigenous people's current context and presence with lives not relegated solely to history. I started with a greeting in the Dakota language. When reclaiming this language, we were told to go outside and speak it even on a walk. I was learning in the Midwest in traditional Dakota territory. This is because the trees remember, the river remembers, and the animals have an innate memory of the language spoken for hundreds of years before English. I encourage you all to note upon whose land you live, work, and play every day. With that, Mitakoye Oyasin, all my relations, and I wish you a great conference. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Moss. This year, we are extremely fortunate to be joined by four nursing leaders who will kick off our opening session, titled Courageous Careers, Stepping Out, Bringing All In. This session is hosted by the Institute for Nursing Leadership. Each of the four speakers will deliver an engaging and transformative talk about courageous leadership, vulnerability, and bringing others up with us. I want to recognize the INL National Advisory Council, led by Chair Julie Fairman, and Vice Chair Jenny Chen Hansen, and all of the National Advisory Council members for their contributions in shaping this event. We are extremely grateful to the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation Future of Nursing Scholarship Program and AARP for sponsorship of these talks, which will be recorded and co-branded for future dissemination among a much broader audience. And now, I turn the podium over to Dr. Julie Fairman, 
Nightingale Professor in Honor of Nursing Veterans Emerita at the University of Pennsylvania School of Nursing and Director of the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation Future of Nursing Scholars Program at the University of Pennsylvania and Chair of the Institute for Nursing Leadership National Advisory Council who will share more about this session. Thank you so much, Julie. Please welcome. Good morning, everyone, and thank you, Dr. White. And thank you, Dr. Moss, for reminding us all to recognize that we are convening on the land of those who will come before us. You'll be seeing Dr. Moss again shortly, and I know that you're going to be very moved by her inspiring talk. Both Jenny Chen Hansen and myself have seen the rehearsals, and you are going to be in for a treat here. I would like to recognize the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation Future of Nursing Scholarship Program for their support of this session. And a special welcome to two Future of Nursing Scholars who are with us for this conference. Dr. Stephanie Bennett, if you'll please stand, and Dr. Ben, and Dr. ben White. Um, there's, if there are any other scholars in the audience who did not say hello to me this morning, <laughs> if you could stand. And also, I'd like to recognize the mentors of this program, who really are the secret sauce for what makes this program so successful. And they are future fellows of the Academy. So thank you. Thank you for coming. On behalf of the INL National Advisory Council, I'm delighted to welcome you to this opening session. It reflects the culminations of the work of the INL Courageous Careers and Signature Event work groups, led by Dr. Guardia Bannister, who's sitting up front here, Paul Kynard, Hussein Tahan, and Janie Heath, who I know are around here somewhere. So thank you for your efforts. And over the past year, the National Advisory Committee members have been planning this session, and it started by asking the question, what does it mean to be, a, to be courageous as a nurse leader? So the purpose of this session is to examine this question through the lens of four incredible nurse leaders who will share their thought-provoking and authentic insights. Sheila Burke, Felicia Bowen, Margaret Moss, and Paul Leon. As nurse leaders, we each carry our own definitions of leadership and courage. The past few years in particular have challenged our notion of these definitions, and many of us have had to rethink what it means to be a leader and what it means to be courageous. Certainly, there are no right or wrong answers. And as the INL Advisory Council grappled with this question, we did identify some common elements that we have asked each of the speakers to consider when telling their story. As the title of this session suggests, leadership is about stepping out or being willing to take risks and be vulnerable and bringing all in or helping others to succeed in their own leadership journey particularly to advance equity, diversity, and inclusivity. Now, the first element of courageous leadership is vulnerability. In addition to discussing when they have succeeded, we have asked our speakers to share times when they felt they did not live up to the mark, did not complete what they set out to achieve, or from their perspective, outright failed. We often are asked to speak about our successes, but it is equally important to be transparent about when we have failed and to let others know that it is okay to do so. Without this acknowledgement, we cannot fully embrace what comes afterwards, which is learning from our failures and figuring out how to use those lessons as tools to move forward. The second element of courageous leadership is supporting others by bringing them with you. Each of us can draw to mind those who have served as our biggest mentors, sponsors, and biggest cheerleaders. As leaders, we may still call upon them, I know I do, 
to support us while championing the next generation of leaders. Our speakers will challenge us to think through how we can do this while centering inclusivity and diversity. And lastly, courageous leadership is about taking action. You'll hear how each of these individuals take an action-oriented approach to their leadership, whether it's exercising moral courage, advancing diversity in the pipeline, building community trust, or influencing health policy. We want each of you and every one of you to walk away from these talks inspired and positioned to take future action. Moreover, as we move through our careers and respective leadership journeys, our self-perception changes. Whether you feel you are early in your career trajectory or consider yourself a more seasoned one, I'm confident that these talks will resonate with you as you continue your own path. And now I will turn it over to Susan Reinhardt, the Senior Vice President and Director, Public Policy Institute at AARP. Thank you, everyone, and enjoy. <laughs> Thanks, Julie, and hello, AAN. It's so good to be here, I have to tell you. To be at an American Academy of Nursing's Health Policy Conference in person is such a delight. I was here last year, but there are so many more of you here this year. So uh, you heard that where I work, AARP, I think some of you have heard of that organization. If not, I'll fill you in. Uh, but I'm also, more of you know me as the Chief Strategist for Family Caregiving Initiatives and the Center to Champion Nursing in America, which we launched 15 years ago. At, we called CCNA, by the way. At CCNA, we run the national campaign, which I know many of you in this room have been involved in. It's the Future of Nursing Campaign for Action, which is an initiative of the ARP Foundation, AARP, and the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation. And our goal is to build a healthier America through nursing, of course. At this campaign, our vision is that everyone in America can live a healthier life, advanced by equity-minded nurses, as essential and valued partners in providing care and promoting health equity and well-being. It's a great privilege to continue this work. We've been working on this for a while, but really going further, addressing one of the most salient health concerns of our time. You know what it is, health equity. We have recently, and this may be news for some people, we have recently established the AARP Center for Health Equity Through Nursing. We call it HN. Maybe we could find a better name. <laughs> Serving as a national resource and vehicle for change by leveraging the powerful forces of nursing, consumers, AARP, and its multi-sector partnerships to advance health equity. In partnership with the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation, I hope you've heard, we recently issued a call for proposals seeking promising solutions for eliminating structural racism and other structural inequities within the nursing profession, health systems, or communities. We are looking for solutions that can lead to improved access to care and services for those most disproportionately impacted by health disparities. You know we're four million strong. I don't have to tell this group that. And that our nation's nurses are really integral for advancing health e equity. And ARP knows that as well. I know that this room is filled with so many nurse leaders who have, as you just heard, courageous careers and that other part stepping out and bringing all in, which we really need to do more of. As, uh, and this is what this opening session is going to be about. One of the nurse leaders you're about to hear it from is Paul Leon. He's sitting over there, or back there. <laughs> he is an AARP Health Equity Fellow, and he's a tireless champion for the growing issue of poverty, homelessness, and health care. I also want to let you know on December 1st, AARP and the campaign will feature more nurse leaders instilling change through our Health Equity Summit and building equity in nursing and uh, nursing leadership. These speakers will share their value of diversifying nursing at all levels and explain how health systems, academia, and healthcare employers are prioritizing diversity, equity, and inclusion in staffing and leadership decisions. So if you can, if you want to join us, please reach out to the Campaign for Action at ARP.org if you'd like to join in this event. Finally, I want to close by, of course, acknowledging and 
and congratulating the 2022 honorees, the newly inducted fellows, you all raised your hands before, is pretty impressive, the living legends and the trailblazers of the American Academy of Nursing. Every one of you that is mentioned here, but every one of you sitting here has contributed to making nursing better and stronger. So thank you for your willingness to work with ARP and the Campaign for Action, and thank you for all you've been doing for your courageous careers. Thanks.